Okay, let's talk about using the SQL Server Configuration Manager. Now, if you remember when we did the installation, SSMS, the SQL Server Management Studio, is a separate install. And it's a separate install because frequently we're going to not want to run it on the server, that we, but we're going to want to run it from our workstation or something like that. So it doesn't install when I do the standard SQL installation, but the SQL Server Configuration Manager does. So I'm not going to find that under Microsoft SQL Server Tools. I'm going to find it under Microsoft SQL Server 2022, and I'm going to choose my Configuration Manager. Now, this sounds like it's going to let you do a whole lot of stuff. It lets you do some key things, but it actually is not a full Configuration Manager. Um, there are a couple of things that we will look at, however. So if you come here to SQL Server Services, this is going to show you all the services running, all the services that are related to your SQL Server engine. So your first one, and let me expand this out, SQL Server, and then in parentheses it says MS SQL Server. Okay, that MS SQL Server identifies the instance, and that is the name for the default instance. So if you installed it with a named instance, you'd have that name underneath there. And then you'd have these for every different, well, these two, for every different instance you have installed on your server. Now notice the first one, this is your database engine. This is running. It is supposed to start automatically. You can see that right here. Your SQL Server browser is stopped. And its start mode is other, and your SQL Server agent if for this instance is stopped, and it is a manual startup. Now, at some point, if you're doing a lot of things with the SQL Server agent, you might want that to start up automatically. But a couple of key things we need to note here. Occasionally, I will have a problem with an SQL Server where the server reboots, and the SQL Server service doesn't start. And typically, that's because it tried to start and it couldn't get the resources it needed because of everything else that was going on. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen sometimes. And so my server comes back up and running and SQL isn't working. Well, in that case, I need to come in here and make sure this is running. If not, I can right-click and start my service. And normally, what will happen, my system is rebooted, my SQL server didn't restart, but everything else has come up. I come in here and I start SQL and it fires off right away and we have no problems. Now there's one other thing I want to show you here. I'm going to double click on the SQL server and I want to go to startup parameters. Now before I do, I just went away. Now before I do, I've got my log on, which tells me that I'm using a uh, anti-service SQL server account name for it normally fine. Uh, it's going to take care of itself there. Um, I have my service. gives me some information about the service itself. I have my file stream. I can enable file stream for Transact SQL. That's something we might talk about later. Always on availability groups. And then startup parameters. Now, here are my startup parameters. And one of the things that you might run across at some point is, I believe their name is Tracking Flags. And they can be set as a startup parameter to configure the way the SQL service is going to run. I am confirming that I got their name or trace flags, not tracking flags, trace flags. I have a hard time remembering that. So the way you would specify that is you'd specify that as a startup parameter. So if I wanted to use trace flag 809, I would do that, dash T809, and then I would add that as a parameter. And the next time the service started, it's going to include that trace flag. Now, I don't want that, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it and then apply and, yeah, I know. Okay, so anytime you make changes here, it doesn't take effect until the service is restarted. Okay, now, this is one of the two things I wanted to point out to you. The other one is this. This is going to be network configuration. So I'm going to come over to SQL Server Network Configuration and then Protocols for SQL Server. Now we've got three of them, Shared Memory, Named Pipes, and TCP IP. Shared Memory means we're accessing it from shared memory. So basically that means when I am managing my SQL server from my SQL server. I don't have to use a network connection to do it. We can do it in shared memory because we're on the same device. And as long as you're on the same device and you have shared memory, that works. 
Um, however, if I am not, I'm trying to access from a different device, then I have to worry about named pipes or a TCP IP. Named pipes, you'll notice, is currently disabled. TCP IP is the one we are typically going to use. So I'm going to open up IP, and right here in my protocol, is this enabled? Yes or no? What's the keep alive? And then listen all. And basically that question for listen all, it's a yes or no question, kind of like enabled is yes or no. It's a yes or no question. Am I listening on all IP addresses on this server or on just some of them? So if I set no, then I can specify to only listen on some IP addresses. If I say yes, then I can specify I want to listen to all of them. So in the IP addresses tab, we're going to see all of our IP addresses we currently have. And for each one, it's going to show is this active, is this enabled, what's the IP address, are we using TCP dynamic ports, not recommended, or are we doing a specific TCP port. And all of them you're going to see here is on TCP port 1433. Now, <clears throat> 1433 is the default port for an SQL server. And since I'm running a default instance, it went to 1433. If I'm working on multiple instances, I can't all have them use 1433. So I have to adjust that a little bit. And this is where I can. In some cases, people want to change the uh, port number anyway because this, uh, 1433 is a default for SQL Server. So if I make it you know, 1495 and somebody tries to connect to 1433 and gain enough access to my server, they're not going to get it. All of these are going to be ignored because over here we said listen all. And if you say listen all, then it ignores your individual IP configurations. And instead, the one that it uses is this one down here at the bottom that says TCP port 1433, and it's under IP all. So if I turn this off, then I can use the individual IP addresses, enable or disable addresses. I want this instance to listen on this address, and I want another instance to listen on a different address. I want another instance to use a different port. Actually, if I've got them on different addresses, it doesn't matter. But I can't have them on the same address and the same port. But I can vary the IP address or the port number or something like that. Now, if you do this, then you need to make sure that you allow space in the firewall for the correct port numbers. Now, Windows Advanced Firewall does give you the ability to say, let you know, allow an app no matter what port that it uses. But if you're using an external firewall as well, that doesn't have that ability. So what you need to do is make sure that ports are open all the way across your network from wherever your client is to wherever your server is. And this is how you do that. Okay, those are the key things here in your SQL Server Configuration Manager.